Hello and welcome to the podcast that asks a simple question. When you stripped off your clothes and actually did take a shit on the salad bar at Wendy's, what the hell were you thinking? I'm your host, Dave Bledsoe, and this is a Saturday, October 3rd, 2015, Metal Health Will Drive You Mad edition of the show, where we talk about us not needing to be crazy to live in America, but it helps. Stay tuned. The What the Hell Were You Thinking podcast is brought to you this week by the home for the recently all right. Were you okay about a week ago, but now, not so much? At the home for the recently all right, we can help. Our soft walls and soothing voices will calm the angry ones in your head and let you know everything is just fine. Take the medicine. Everything is going to be just fine. The medicine is good for you. The home for the recently all right. Come in. Stay a while. Maybe things will get better. Probably. But maybe not. If you would like to sponsor the show, call up the home for the be all right and have them give you the medicine. The medicine is good for you. Okay, I've saved my favorite group for last. The maniacs and crazy people. Yeah. The ones who live out where the buses don't run. And I distinguish between maniacs and crazy people. A maniac will beat nine people to death with a steel dildo. A crazy person will beat nine people to death with a steel dildo, but he'll be wearing a Bugs Bunny suit at the time. So you can't put them all away. You know, you gotta keep some of them around just for the entertainment. Like a guy who tells you the king of Sweden is using his penis as a radio transmitter to send anti-Semitic lesbian meatloaf recipes to soupy sales in Marvin Hamlish. A guy like that, you want to give him his own radio show. As this week was going along, I thought to myself, Dave, I says, because I always refer to myself as Dave during an internal monologue, Dave, you need to give the politics a rest. You've been raging harder than Rush Limbaugh on Viagra while surfing a Dominican orphanage website. Damn, dog. In a probes. You know, you need a break. So I sat down and wrote a fun little script where I was raging harder than Chris Christie at an all-night donut feast about seasonal pumpkin spiced atrocities. And it was going to be a nice little show where I only insulted people in general and not a specific group of persons for no other reason than their irrational political beliefs. But then reality came knocking and again I experienced my old friend Oh, deja vu. Our little American problem walked into a community college campus in eastern Oregon and killed nine people and injured seven more. Dude, come on. You shot up a community college? Haven't these people suffered enough? This guy, who according to images on the news, still has a MySpace account, packed up his satchel full of guns, as people like him so often do, and bopped off to shoot a bunch of people, as people like him so often do. You know, it was just another Thursday in America. Oh, and here's a little nugget that surely won't be used to whip the oppressed Christian majority in this country into a lather. Allegedly, he forced his victims to stand up and state their religion. And if they answered Christian, he told them, well, you'll be meeting your God in just a few seconds, and then he shot them. You know, the MySpace account was bad enough, but using something that's probably an outdated 80s movie reference, that just indicates the presence of a disturbed mind. Well, that and, you know, the, the, the mass shooting. Oh, the disturbed mind. That, dear listeners, is the real killer here, not the satchel full of high-capacity firearms and the hundreds of rounds of ammunition. I mean, anybody would think that it was the guns that killed these people are like crazy. White people be crazy? Yeah, they do! <laughs> I knew you were going to know! <laughs> they do be crazy, Some though! Do. Y'all do! <laughs> I mean, clearly, these people were murdered by guns. Uh, oh, and by the way, the NRA would re- ask us all to refer to shooting victims as freedom eggs. Because... You can't have a Liberty omelet without breaking a few of them. You know what I'm saying? Is this thing on? That joke went over a lot better with my 14 followers on Twitter. Okay, so let's talk about it then. 
Let's break down mental illness in the United States, because like most of the spurious turds defending guns, there's a nugget of truth that plops out before the giant stinker is squeezed into the bowl. Well, yeah, okay, that's just about the most awful thing I've ever seen. It's no joke that health care, mental health care, in the United States is an absolute joke. Shit, health care in general is such a joke in the United States that Shecky Green is thinking about suing. None of you know who Shecky Green are. Never mind. There's no one over 60 listening to this podcast. And if there is, it's because someone in, the, in their home has a very cruel sense of humor. People who like to ignore obvious, simple solutions to complex problems, like passing stringent gun laws and vigorously enforcing them, like to lay the blame for the inexplicable number. Those numbers are only inexplicable if you ignore the fact that we have way too many guns, but they like to lay the blame for that number on the, at the feet of people with mental health problems. And it goes without saying that walking into a crowded room strapped like Arnold Schwarzenegger going up against the Predator is not what one would call a rational act, particularly if that room that you're walking into is a first-grade classroom. Some people do hear voices in their head. What about a guy who hears a voice in his head tells him to kill his entire family, so he does it? Is this the only thing a voice in the head ever tells these people to do is to kill others? Doesn't a voice ever tell a guy, go take a shit on the salad bar at Wendy's? (laughs) Doesn't a voice tell a guy to take out his dick on the merry-go-round once in a while? Well, some guys do take out their dicks on the merry-go-round, but usually it's their own idea. (laughs) And other times, they walk into the Wendy's, which I'm fairly sure doesn't even have a salad bar anymore, and just shoot the place up. So when you go into a Wendy's, I guess you pays your money and you takes your chances. But still, the argument goes, the problem is, is that we have crazy people. And that we need to focus on efforts to identify and treat those who need that special help. And of course, I could point out that not all people with mental illnesses are a danger to themselves or other. In fact, the vast majority of them are productive members of society who only want to get on with their lives the best they can. And it's hard enough to go through life carrying the weight of an illness without some jack-off waving an AK-47 outside an Arby's laying his shit on them. Indeed, given the choice between a medicated schizophrenic who occasionally experiences flashes of delusional thinking and the average member of the NRA who constantly experiences delusional thinking, I know which one I'm going to set next to on the goddamn bus, because at least the schizophrenic will make sense from time to time. And how exactly are we going to identify the people who are too crazy to own guns? Some people feel, not necessarily myself, but some people feel that the simple desire to own a device that exists only to kill people quickly and easily is in of itself not quite sane. So do we just have a battery of standardized tests that accompany each gun purchase? Because that's basically what most rational people think we ought to be doing already. So clearly this is not going to be the answer. Hey, maybe we could have... uh, potential gun buyers take a a horse shack test next question is a 25 point toss up first one to answer it okay who were the stars of the musical movie footlight parade oh 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 oh, me oh please me oh horse shack sweat arms and we can let mr cotter decide if they're sane enough to own a gun Yes, I wrote this entire show to make that one joke right there. Welcome back. This is, of course, not what gun people want, because they want other people or agencies to identify the crazies and put them up some sort of list. No, not a list, because that would mean the government got involved in keeping a list associated with guns. Maybe crazy people could wear something on their sleeves or collars, which clearly identified them. Or a tattoo, something permanent. Maybe right there on their wrist where they could see it when they hand it over. Yeah, okay, I see I'm God winning. Never mind. Look, according to the data I just Googled, about one in five Americans experience some form of mental illness, which sounds a bit low if you ask me. The states with the highest rates of mental illness, Utah and West Virginia, both of which, if you've ever been there, are completely understandable. Boo! 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 
Although a 2011 CDC report pegs the number closer to 25% and shows the states with the highest number of the mentally ill as the states of the old confederacy, though this is factored around oppression and, frankly, being born in Tennessee, this too is just completely understandable. You're being so mean! If one were to drill down a bit, you could probably peg the states with the highest prevalence of gun ownership, correspond fairly closely to the states with an above-average number of mental illnesses and a below-average IQ level. Hey, you're being a dick right now. Stop being a dick. Of course, that's just the diagnosed people. The sheer, not the sheer wall of human misery that could be diagnosed if Americans weren't terrified of all things related to mental health. Look around this country. Fat, drunk, hooked on television, suffering pure delusions of grandeur. Shit, delusions of adequacy. Are you really going to tell me that most Americans are sane? Donald Trump, Donald fucking Trump is now seriously considered, uh, seriously considered a contender for president? And you think that the American people are not batshit crazy? If you came into my gun shop wearing a hat that said, Make America Great Again, I would refuse to serve you and sell you anything based on your mental health status. Are you really going to tell me, after looking at America, the same people who for some reason made Kim Kardashian a thing and buy Taylor Swift albums like they're going out of style and tell me that they are not mentally well? <sighs> Other countries have crazy people, you know. Have you ever met an Australian? Those fuckers are all clinically wackadoodle. They live in a country where literally everything can kill you. Where if you sit down on a toilet, a spider the size of a small dog grabs one of your testicles and runs away with it, and they're fucking happy to be there. Come on. Come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. Come and say good day instead of a reasonable response to a country that is overrun with cancerous Tasmanian devils, which is... Get me the hell out of here! But you know, they had one, just one mass shooting. Admittedly, it still holds the records for the most people killed in one event, but they didn't go out and get rid of the crazy people. After all, where would we put 24 million of them? No, they got rid of the fucking guns! The thing is, mental illness is not a uniquely American thing. You want to know what is a uniquely American thing? Deep-fried fucking Oreos. The rest of the world just thinks that shit is disgusting. Oh, yeah, and mass shootings. We're pretty much the only industrialized country in the world that does that, too. And given my druthers, I'd rather have the Oreos. Either the good old U.S. of A. has some really fucking crazy people. And now the news. Florida man accused of tossing deadly urine. Florida man headbutts butts, knocks himself out. Florida man chews off own fingerprints in hopes of not being identified. Florida man brings dead body to lawyer's office. Florida man texts detectives to buy drugs. Florida man tries to trade alligator for beer. Florida, by the way, is the home state of George Zimmerman. Just saying. So if we're serious about mental illness, being a preeminent factor in shootings, Florida should be the home of the mass shooting. And looking it over... They're pretty much on par with the rest of the United States. Insanity, no matter how much we like to think it is, is not a prerequisite to murder. I believe every human being on this planet is one really bad day away from killing another human being. We want to believe we're these noble creatures, the gazelle who sacrifices itself for the good of the herd, but really, we're a fucking honey badger, okay? We don't give a shit. And let's not pretend it's any other way. I had a commander when I was in the military who hated my guts, and trust me, the feeling was mutual. He would routinely drag me into his office to chew my ass, seemingly oblivious to the that I was standing in front of him with a loaded pistol on my hip and a deep yearning in my heart to use it. I would fantasize while he was yelling at me at the expression on his face if I just pulled the damn thing out and shot his ass in mid-screen. And there were two reasons I never did. One, I don't want to die in prison. And two, I just wasn't having that bad of a day. There were days when I was. He was just fortunate I wasn't around him at the time. So we need to stop assuming that mental illness is synonymous with murder, and vice versa. 
Even those with deep psychosis is rarely kill. According to what I read in a 2010 study, found that only 1 in 700 diagnosed psychotics commit a homicide before receiving care. And of those receiving care, 1 in 10,000 commit a murder. And of those psychotics who did kill, 4 out of 10 killed before they were diagnosed. So, while violence during the first episode, first episode of a psychotic break is a problem, it's rare and usually not lethal. But according to the gun people, it's all crazy people shooting shit up around here, and with most gun arguments, the reality of the numbers outweighs the fantasy of the people making the arguments. In another irony, a lot of people making gun arguments believe their guns are the only thing keeping the government from taking over the country. The country the government is already running. Clearly, these people are fucking lunatic. People suffering from paranoia, delusional, even magical thinking are some of the biggest proponents of guns. And we're focusing on the people hearing voices in their head that aren't telling them to overthrow the government. The genuine crazy people usually just hear voices telling them that they're special or that they have some great calling. Maybe they're Jesus or Napoleon. When right-wingers hear voices, they sound a lot like Rush Limbaugh telling them that Obama is a Muslim and the government is coming for them. Are the people shooting up schools and churches sane? Clinically, probably not. They suffer from some mental disorder that disassociates them, disassociates them from their fellow human being and drives them to kill large numbers of them. But are they crazy? As in, are they doing it because their neighbor's dog is transmitting them anti-Semitic lesbian meatloaf recipes? I don't think so. They know what they're doing is wrong, immoral, illegal, and most of them would seem sane to you and me right up to the point in time the shooting starts. What these people all do is share a belief that guns make you a big man, that they make you powerful, that guns make you famous. And maybe that isn't crazy at all, because these small men with a huge chip on their shoulders all seem to become larger than life for just a few minutes right up until the time the next shooting happens, and we don't even remember their name. Damn, dog! Support for this podcast comes from Microsoft Teams. The world has changed, and Microsoft Teams is there to help us stay connected. Teams is the safe and secure way to chat, meet, call, and collaborate. To learn more, visit Microsoft.com slash Teams. Support for this podcast comes from Goldman Sachs. What do Goldman Sachs experts and leading thinkers have to say about trends shaping markets, industries, and the global economy? Stay informed with the latest insights from Goldman Sachs on the economic and market implications of COVID-19. Available on our podcasts at gs.com slash COVID-19 or any of your favorite podcast platforms. That is it for the show this week. We thank the band Hypnostate, as always, for their music during the opening credits. You can find it on gemendo.com along with all the rest of their stuff. We thank you, dear listener, for the listening. Damn, dog, I don't know how you do it. Y'all be (laughs) cray-cray. If you've stumbled across the podcast by accident, perhaps abandoned in a field where someone wisely discarded their infective phone and fled the area, and you feel the need to find us, well, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. Indeed, we're wherever quality podcasts are sold, though I can't explain to you why. And we implore you to subscribe to our show, rate us, review us, because if you won't do that, you won't do anything for love. Not really. You can follow the show on Twitter at the hell underscore podcast. I really try to do the Twitter. I'm just not very good at it. 140 characters. I, I can't fart in 140 characters. You can find us on Facebook, and all of the shows are at www.whatthehellpodcast.com. For myself, Dave Bledsoe, and all the fictional people on this show, we remind you that we are axe grinders, pile drivers, our mothers say we never, ever mind her. Our brains are insane, and Ted Cruz says we're one big pain. He does. He says we say we're dead. We're mean to Ted. He's very sensitive. We'll see you guys next time.